Here we are, and we've got another shootout for you. We've got the Land Cruiser 150 and the Isuzu X Rider. And we've got Warner, reigning defending off road <laughs> champion of the world. And we're going to be taking this to Vipatal on the old Eselbunk Road. And we'll see what these things have got. Bloody beautiful lineup, eh? Yeah, it's magnificent. I'm looking forward to the draft. Doesn't get any better than this. No. What do you think, Granddad? Yeah, it's pretty good. This is what the Americans love, this type of thing. Exactly. Nice big truck. Yeah. Aggressive tires. Has it got a TV reversing thing? Yeah, it's got a reverse camera and not too many sensors, so you get what you need and what not what mm. they think you need. <laughs> well, and what's it sell for? I think it starts at about 420,000, so they're coming in reasonably priced on That's this with a. So this is going to compete with your Mahindras and all of that. In Australia, this comes off and it goes in under the car, and this opens up. Yeah. So that you can, if you've got a trailer or anything, you can just open the. the uh, exactly. The if you want to open this and, up. And, and access. Yeah. Absolutely. Proper like a chopper. It's a nice set of wheels. Oh, it's great. And this rack is amazing as well. It hasn't, uh, doesn't make a noise in the wind. Here on the highway, it's quite noisy in the cabin. You can feel it's the, the entry level model. Not much dampening on the engine noise. No real senses, which I love. This thing uh, doesn't beep at you at all. It's got what you need a rear re reversing camera for safety, that's great. But a lot of the time I, I find these cars just beep at you unnecessarily and it takes your eyes off the game. And we've got a hell of a game lined up for you today, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Trimmer, my brother, in his brand new Prado 150. This guy's got lots of kudos off-road. He's driven across the Simpson Desert three times. Uh, he's got a couple of awards along the way. Good dude, loves his off-roading. And I'm in the 4x2 Isuzu X Rider, about half the price. But is it half the fun? I don't think so. This thing's got this, the proper engine. It's got the 3 liter turbo diesel in here. They haven't skimped on the engine. That's really, really nicely, ladies and gentlemen. I was a little surprised that it's only a 4x2, but I'm. It's, most press cars are top of the range, but it's nice to get a middle of the range model. I, I, by no means is this entry level. I'd say this is the top of the range 4x2 that you're going to get. It's got leather seats, diff lock, climate, uh, it's pretty much climate control. But more than that, not too much to speak of. You've got your radio. I don't see any GPS on here, which is fine by me. It's really just what you need on a buck and it feels really 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 well made ladies and gentlemen i'm happy to report on that when i first got in here it felt a lot like the mahindra that gutsy old school diesel sound heavy steering wheel nice tackies on there they've really hit the mark for this thing for somebody that's looking for a good workhorse bucking that still has some some luxury touches to it. It does make a bit of a sound here when you close the window. That knocking sound. But other than that everything feels well made. The buttons are robust, solid. This is the sort of car you could get muddied up and dirty and, and you'd still be 100%. So we've got a nice little loop uh, plan today. We're going here, we're on the N1 at the moment, heading towards Paul. Then I'm going to hook it to Tolbach, and then from there, Optiberg, and from Optiberg, the, the gravel fund begins, which is about a 100k gravel section from there to Clan William, including some nice little off road sections. And it'll give you a good idea of what. One and a half million rand top of the range 4x4 four four gives you compared to a half a million rand workhorse bucky with a couple of luxury touches can do. 
So sit back, get yourself a cold beverage, and enjoy the show only on Africa Sideways. Cultural, but I like that about the engine it's very very reliable you can put dodgy fuel in it if you're going to Africa and it will still go you can even run this on biofuel you know it's one of the toughest most reliable diesel engines in the game and uh, I was chatting to a guy who runs a diesel a diesel repair center and he says he doesn't he sees a lot of Ford Rangers but he doesn't see many Isuzu's for repairs which is really a good sign this car is made to last ladies and gentlemen in terms of tires they went for the General Grabber AT3's which have been getting good reviews of late they look really good nice thick sidewall in terms of sidewall strength, on, on, I saw on the Vehco magazine um, review when they punctured all the tires at the side with a high pressure device and it came out middle of the road, so it's, uh, but it's quiet on the highway. The grip's going to be phenomenal on, 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 on gravel and just the sidewalls aren't class leading but they by no means the worst. Op de berg.
Schlussberg up there. You can't go wrong with this. No, 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 I'm happy with that. And resale on this, you're never gonna, really going to lose much. No. We made it to the top of the pass here. You know the name of this pass? Guido, Guido Pass. Guido Pass overlooking Ceres Valley towards Matruisburg, I guess. A little bit of Prince Hab Alfred Hamlet. Oh, that's Prince Albert Hamlet. So yeah. Ceres is on the, is that at the, in the far side? On the far side there. Yeah. So we'll shortly be getting to the gravel section, which you probably all come to see. Our Susie's doing really well uphill here. Good power to weight ratio. Probably because it doesn't have the four wheel drive system to worry about. Old Uncle Warner was struggling to keep up. <laughs> Maybe he was just re reserving his petrol card. Because she's a big girl, this. 102 kilowatts. Oh, yeah, comes a Jimny. Business is picked up, ladies and gentlemen. A shy Jimny over there. If I had to buy a new car, and you want to keep resale value, you're going to get a Jimny or you're going to buy a Toyota. <laughs> Pretty simple. A lovely car. Op die berg, ladies and gentlemen.
made it home. Big Sky Country. Made it to the gravel, ladies and gentlemen. Thought I'd get one last picture of this car while the cars are clean. <laughs> it's gonna get dusty now. You're gonna air down, Governor. Ah, uh, we can. What do you feel? This would be good to have a tire pressure monitor. I suppose you got one in your car already. Yeah. Now with these biscuit tires, I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be alright for now. It's more just for comfort. Yeah, I didn't bring a compressor. So how, how did you find uh, how did you find coming coming up the hill here? Yeah? Uh, other than the fuel consumption, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't short on power? No, nothing at all. No, I'm very happy so, so you, far. You didn't buy this for the fuel consumption? No, I didn't. Right. <laughs> you need to continue reminding me of that fact. Exactly. We're on the gravel now, ladies and gentlemen, and the Isuzu is right at home here. Yeah? Feels more pleasant here than on the highway. The all-terrain tyres come in handy. Proper grip on the general gravels. on gravel. Haven't had to let the tires down yet. These rock formations are really cool. Signature of the cedar bird.
Gentlemen, who managed to wrestle the keys off Warner? What a lovely man! And here we are in the brand new Land Cruiser Prada. What a lovely place to be! This is this is a VX model. This will set you back about a million bucks. Nice high seating position. In 800 meters, bear right. Okay, okay, we'll just follow the bar. I drove the diesel 2.8 litre version of this a few weeks ago, so I'm very interested to see what the power is like. A bit of power there. I'm a, I'm a little bit underwhelmed, to be honest. Foot flat now. Oh, okay, okay. It woke up. I'm sorry. What We've got different modes, yeah. We've got comfort, eco. Where's the sports mode? Hey, okay, here we go. Sport and Sport Plus. Okay, let's put in... I think Sport should be fine. Only 
any trimmer would have the GPS on in the off-road track, but anyway, there he is. Continue on the current road. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that's the GPS system. Actually, feels very planted. Ooh. I must say the tires don't feel quite as grippy as the as these. They got the running the Dunlops on here. Uh, not quite as grippy as the. General grabbers, but so much quieter in here. No wind noise. That's why you pay twice the price, ladies and gentlemen, for these touches of class. Feels like this is the Rolls Royce of off roaders. Easy. Let's take the windscreen. Oh, that's class leading windscreen wipers right there. Let's see what the handling's like. Trimmer's gone. Okay, this is a little washed out section. Let me let the other guys through. Sure, first impressions of the 2.8. I'm very impressed, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely more perky than the than uh, my impressions of the V6. Definitely more perky than the 2.8. No surprises because it's uh, a bigger engine. Um, Interior is very good. There's the old Prado. That thing's a beast. Rhino one, how you doing, big guy? We'll we'll fly again one of these days. Oh yeah, definitely good power there. Let's try Sport Plus. Trim. I hope you don't mind. I'm <laughs> Hello. Let me just get a little picture here, my old girl. Oh, this Prado 150 is a beautiful piece of kit. Right at home here on the Cedarburg. Very spacious. Very groovy indeed. You can hear the water. Beautiful Cedarburg water. Back on the road we go now, we're gonna try and catch the man up. He's been dilly dallying a bit here. Let's see what it's like when you give it a bit of stink. Oh, that's not the place for it. Can we just go normal mode? Oh, sports much more fun. Puts the skirt up and gets on with it. In the heart of the Cedarburg, yeah, and the Prado 150s right at home. Two different vehicles. The Asus is utilitarian. It was some luxury touches, very, very solidly made, and this is top end. Top end motoring in the Prado 150, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna be interested to see what Warner has to say about the Asus. Six times South African off-road champion, Simpson days in three times. Equestrian colors for South Africa. Yeah, it's done it all. I mean, I might be spicing a bit there, but he's my brother, so you're gonna, who are you gonna spice for? <laughs> Let's put the darts in you. Oh, beautiful. She's a bit of a goer. She's definitely a bit of a goer. A lot of, it's quite wallowy, but I mean, it's to be expected from a big girl. Oh, and now comes the famed Defender. Defender Sender. Great being in the Cedarburg. Magic part of the world. I wonder where Trim is. Justin Diesel, baby! Oh, we're, get, we're getting on to the more 
more tricky Eselbank section now. Let's just turn the old truck looks really good going off into the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the 150s direct competition is well. There's not much competition in this super luxury SUV market. I guess the, the new Defender would be the main competition, which in terms of off-road ability simply matched, but in terms of reliability, this thing streets ahead. That's the most important thing when you go off-road. And then. Nothing really much. Perhaps the Mitsubishi Pajero and your Ford Everest and all that, but it's not quite the same. Those are more in competition with the Fortuna. Oh, this is really gorgeous. Let's get the camera on the front of the car, ladies and gentlemen.
Bye. 
almost got I almost got stuck on one of those in that big puddle. <laughs> no, I almost lost it, got stuck in the big one, the car. Rear wheel drive, dude. Venting. Kids love this car. I love this car. So all in all, this, this car has been incredibly fun to drive. It's lapped up the best road to the Seidenberg. See how tough it is. It just wants to go all day long. Loves these twisty turning. Suspension is on point. This thing is made to last. That isn't wrong. So how did you find the how do you how you find the Isuzu? And I'm su suitably impressed, uh, I must say. But agricultural like, but as a Toyota lover, I'm properly impressed with it. it. Gets up and goes, and it's got everything you need. Yeah, exactly. Bare bones where you need it most. Of Completely the truck. comfortable. Doesn't lose any any direction on the on the gravel. And it doesn't beep at you. No, <laughs> it doesn't beep at you. I was expecting to get out of shape on the corrugation, but yeah. nothing. Not at all. Eh? And this is a standard tire pressure. The general grabbers are doing well. There's no squeaks. There's no old bucky kind of uh, rattles and clunks. It's all it comes alive on this. It's all proper. Exactly. And it's very responsive. 
And they stuck the three liter in here, so then you're not feeling like you're underpowered at all. No. Proper piece of kit. And the old 150, I mean, that's a Rolls Royce on an off road track, you know. But the air, the air suspension, it's so, so I, I tried it out, I loaded it earlier just to see if the compressor is making a noise and it was great. Um, I'm, uh, probably one of the most underrated four wheel drives yeah. in South Africa, I reckon. It is. You know, everyone thinks it's a mommy shopping car, but quite honestly, it's, uh, it's far from that. It holds its own. Yeah. It does. And it, as you put a, put, a, put a set of manly tackies on there, and it, yeah. you know, mm. it transforms it. Completely. A bull bar and you're in business. And all, the, and all the comfort. Exactly, all the comfort you need. Yeah. So Trimmer's going to Namibia in the coming weeks. It'll be interesting to see how she goes on there. Yeah, well, step one is the roof rack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then the drawer system. Uh, and then the fridge and uh, some kind of semblance of a packing space in the back. So, and those we'll cowboys from Govi X going to throw you a bumper? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, the 150 is not the most popular car in South Africa to kit out. So, not. No, they're not. Uh, in Australia, it might Australia's, be. Australia's, yeah, a whole different kettle of fish. So this is definitely this is this is top end luxury versus utilitarian, and. They both serve their purpose very well. I, I thoroughly enjoyed driving this now. It was good fun. Exactly. Hawks so, back to my old Bucky days, so it was great fun. Six times South African national champion. <laughs> what an endorsement yeah. I see. Yeah. Come to the end of my time with the X Rider, and it has been phenomenal. A half a million, four by two with diff lock, leather seats, air conditioning, and doesn't beep at you. It's not a nanny state car. It's a really cool car. I saw GT Automag or something like that. Another cool South African blogger saying this is the coolest buck year 2021, and my bro, you are right. This is the coolest bucky of 2021. It just does what it says on the packet. And if you want serious off-road ability, get the four-wheel drive version of this. With the rear diff, it'll get you everywhere you need to get to. And it's got the old school diesel engine. You know, some people say it hasn't evolved enough over the years, but that's perfect for me. In Africa, when you got dodgy fuel, you don't want something that's too evolved. You want old school tech. I think that's the problem with the D4D is it's a little bit too advanced for Africa. That's why a lot of the overland builders are going with the 1HZ or the 1HDT or one of those 4.2 turbo diesels because it just gives you that robustness which this thing's got in bucket loads. When I first got in it reminded me of the Mahindra and when I got out it reminded me that it was an Isuzu which is good enough for me and good enough for a 9 out of 10 on the Africa Sideways car rating. Going to have a little break for a week or three. Might fit the FX4 in at some stage. And then we've got the new BT50. Much talked about BT50 coming in September. Hopefully going to take that up to the garden route. Sandpox hooked me up, baby. I want to review your place. So we'll catch you next time on Africa Sideways. And if you'd like to support the creation of more content on Africa Sideways, car reviews, overlanding talk, 4x4 adventures, etc, etc, please hit the thanks button at the bottom of the screen next to the thumbs up.